and he travels through the underworld and makes stops at a number of locations where different sinners are punished. Originally, I only wanted to do a solo cello part, so just one cello, um, but as I was writing it, um, it kind of grew from there and I found that the sound of a solo cello wasn't enough. So what I'm doing now is I'm layering a lot and a lot of cellos on top of each other and creating more of an orchestral sound. What I've written is a, a new piece of music for every location along that journey. So the idea of this album that I'm making is we follow Dante on his journey through the underworld. The music mostly um, is textural, so it'll describe maybe the atmosphere of a location. And the idea is I will take these recordings and when I'm playing live, I will improvise over these landscapes. So I'll essentially be almost like Dante narrating the story as I move through this soundscape. It's a very big project, very big project. I think it's actually the biggest that he's ever he's ever created. It's almost like a film, like film music, where you've the film like in your head, and then Ellie has written the score for it. The, the reason that Ellie didn't want to do it in the studio is because in the studio things can be quite tense. Um, there can be a lot of pressure, and because you're paying, like a lot, a lot of time, you're paying by the hour. Uh, we set up, you know, stereo and all the rest, so, uh, and also up on top of the balcony as well. Um, so there's two mics up in the balcony, one down at it, and uh, it just the, the humongous sound that we got off that was incredible um, for these really tense uh, crescendos that we have in the piece. I don't know if, it's, uh, if there's anything implicitly musical about him, but when I, what I found when I was reading the poem is just how um, how stark the atmosphere was in each of these locations. And I found the whole thing extremely dramatic. Um, even for a work that's 700 years old, it feels very alive now. And I was hearing a lot of music as I was reading the poem. And so I just had to record it, basically. Because he knows me so well, he also knew how to compose, what, what parts to compose for the violin. It works really well, especially the high registers of um, yeah, kind of like glassy sounds. You can imagine um, like icy bits of, I don't know, like this is a paradox, but icy bits of hell that doesn't work, but. Um, if you know what I mean, like that glassy bit of, um, yeah, cold. A lot of harmonics, uh, they work really well, or like the highest notes that I can play on the violin. Yeah, this is the absolute extreme of what, uh, the extreme opposite of what Elliot is doing. I love it, it's absolutely magical. He just filtered it through his uh, mind and uh, brought it to life. The first violent ring is in a lake of boiling blood. The second one is a ring of trees with no leaves, like a creepy forest. And the third one is a scorching desert plain. And so each one has a different, um, a different sound palette. So the first one will be very uh, hot. You know, it's a boiling lake of blood. So everything, the vibrato is very slow, and it's very bubbling and hot. Um, the harmony is very dense. The next one is this little empty forest. So the, everything gets a little bit sparser now, but the rhythm is the same. And lots of pizzicato in the strings, and 
playing with the wood of the bow. And the last one is extremely hot, so lots of playing near the bridge to get these screechy high sounds. Like the, the room in there sounds fantastic and it's it's certainly not purpose built, it's just it's just a you know a farmhouse. Um, that just happens to sound amazing. <laughs> He wanted to do it somewhere that was a bit more tranquil, where he had more time, more flexibility. And he also wanted family to be around as well. This is easily the best recording session, the smoothest recording session I've ever done. Elliot is one of the most prepared and talented musicians I've ever recorded. One of the tracks has 58 different cello bits that are the exact same, just a slightly different note. And he was just banging them out. So musically what I did is I tried to layer all of these cellos on top of each other and violin to create that kind of organ sound. And the feeling you should get as the chords move into each other is that it never fully comes to a resting place. There's always some kind of sense of unease. It doesn't strike you that it's 700 years old because the people seem very familiar. Even if we don't know who these people were, we can find people acting in a similar way. Today. I've got a bit of array actually at this one. Yeah. I'll be using the recordings that I've done here. I'll be uh, triggering them live with my laptop um, and I'll be improvising uh, on top of these. <clears throat> the sins are still the same, really. There's a place, particularly for corrupt politicians. This is the beauty of this piece. Everybody can understand it on, uh, in his uh, or her own way. I guess the desired effect is that you feel like you're going on this journey, even if you don't know the poem. Okay.